Hi everyone, this is Troy Dreyer, Senior Associate Editor for StreamingMedia.com, coming to you from the red carpet at Streaming Media West in Los Angeles. Joining me today, Stephanie Freed, who is with Vivo, your favorite music site online. Stephanie, uh, tell people what you do. Hi, I'm Stephanie Freed. I'm the Vice President of Research Insights and Analytics at Vivo. Um, that means that I look at the consumer behavior, what people are doing on our site, what their interests are, why they're there, how we can make them happier. Also looking at the advertising effectiveness um, of the site um, to make sure that our advertisers really understand what the platform's doing for them and what people are doing really across platforms as well. And then also oversee the analytics, so really tracking the behavior, why people are going places, seeing how they interact with different parts of the site, whether or not they're staying with the videos using our playlists, that kind of thing, so we can really understand and optimize. We were on a panel a little uh, later this afternoon called uh, Quantifying the Audience for Advertisers. Uh, I know it's a big topic, getting advertisers to buy in to online video like they have with TV. What do they need to know about the online viewer? What do you need to break down and tell them? Well, I mean, I think what they want to know and what I want to tell them is a little bit different. Um, but basically, the thing that they're most concerned with is what they do on television, which is really measuring eyeballs. So how many people do they have who are 18 to 49? How many females do they have, for example? Um, and so that's really where the measurement is going, the online GRPs, um, so that it can match with the TV measurement. What I think they need to know is I think they need to understand the context around that exposure. So it's not just how many eyeballs they have, um, but how effective is it when they're reaching those people. So we might reach maybe half as many people in the demo, but we might be five times as effective. So in that way, it's a, it's a better um, place for their media. And so that's what I try to show them is the effectiveness of that, of that content. Um, I think what's also important is understanding how people view and who they're viewing the content with. Because we do see a lot of co-viewing of music videos, I think not surprisingly. And so it's being able to take those people into account as well when we're looking at those numbers and make sure that they understand that they are monetizing those impressions that aren't necessarily coming through the ad server. It seems like the conversation for advertising, at least what I'm hearing is, the, the online prov content providers keep saying, we can give you so much more, we can break it down, we can give you, you know, what sites they visit, we can give you what they had for breakfast, and the TV advertisers are saying, shut up and give us our GRPs, which um, is gross rating points. I had to learn the language of advertising to write about this stuff. Uh, explain what GRPs are and, and why are they so important to TV advertisers? Yeah, so uh, I think GRPs to me, GRPs are a little bit old school for the reasons that, that you were mentioning, which is online we really know so much about these people that on TV they just don't know through Nielsen. And so what they've done is they've kind of used um, age and gender as a proxy for reaching their audience. So they say, we really want people who buy diapers, right? But we're going to say that means females uh, 25 to 54. And, and we're going to you know, target that demographic and hope that they happen to have kids, right? Um, that's really just a proxy. If they could actually target people who bought diapers, they would definitely do that, right? And that's in, in the online space, we've definitely gotten more sophisticated about being able to reach those more behavioral segments versus the demographic segments. Um, GRPs is really looking at the reach out of a specific audience. Um, and as you said, it's gross ratings points. So you're basically taking what your, your reach is against a demographic and then taking it out of a universe uh, or an audience. And that's actually a point of contention for online GRP. Should it be out of the online audience or out of the TV audience or out of the total population? Um, and that's actually where cross-media um, GRPs is kind of going as the total population because you have to have a universe that represents all the platforms. Um, so basically then they're looking at, you know, did I reach enough of these people and hoping that by reaching those people, they're reaching their audience. So it's really just uh, really a proxy for who they actually want to reach. Mm -hmm. And the problem, it seems like, with buying online is one of scale, is what I keep hearing. Like they could get, they could isolate those diaper buyers, but maybe it would be just a tiny chunk because they could, they, then they want to serve to millions. 
but you're a giant site. Can you give them millions of diaper buying mothers? <laughs> we can, yeah. I mean, we have, you know, in the U.S. about 50 million visitors per month, which is obviously a lot of people. Um, and what's nice about that is really any way you slice and dice them, we have more of them than almost every other video site. So we are able to reach audiences at huge scale. We reach a third of um, internet users uh, every month. So obviously really um, big audience that we can kind of slice and dice across the board. Mm -hmm. Who is the average Vivo viewer? Just from your analytics, curious. Um, who is this, this music lover who always goes to your site? So, you know, it's interesting because, you know, people always think that we skew very young, like all teen users, and that's really not the case. We're about 75% comp for 18 to 49, which is obviously the key TV um, buying demographic. And, you know, even, you know, beyond that and outside of those limits, we have a big chunk of teens and a big chunk of, you know, 50 plus that we can target as well, um, which is kind of what's nice is having that scale across. Um, uh, age groups, but I think you know, 18 to 34 is really kind of our core. Um, we do also well in the 13 to 17, and we're very even male-female actually, so about 50-50. Now I just did a big story for our print magazine um, about how Vivo is getting really big into live concerts. I mean, you guys have uh, regular partnerships with places like David Letterman Show, and you broadcast a, a lot of other special live events. Um, tell me about the live music online. Um, what are you seeing? Are, are people putting on their calendar, here's when this concert is that I want to see and, and tuning in for it? Yeah, so I, right now we do a lot of, of concerts and, and I like to think of it as the concerts are live but it's not necessarily appointment viewing right now. People aren't used to tuning in specifically for an event online. And obviously if we do a lot of promotion around it, we make sure people really know about it, we're gonna get a bigger audience for the live tune-in. But really where the concerts live is in that on-demand environment. So we, we take the concert, we chop it up so that they can watch a specific song if they want to. They can watch it all in a row. And so when they're looking for a Katy Perry video and they watch one of her music videos, they're gonna find the concert footage as well and they're going to watch that and start consuming that and so we can see you know millions of views you know each month for some of that content two years after the concert is actually live um, so it's still live footage Katy Perry was live um, but people watch it throughout time it's not necessarily something they they feel like they need to tune into right when it first airs on the site what is could you give me like an estimate of the ratio of the amount of people who watched that Katy Perry when it was first broadcast on your site versus how many people eventually watched it or part of it on demand? Yeah, I mean, that's, it's a little hard to do right now just because we're also a, a pretty new site, um, a, a couple of years old, um, actually three years old almost. Um, and so we actually still see, you know, up to a million streams a month for some of the concerts that we had really early in our existence. So there's a very long tail and, and large tail, you know, in terms of volume. So, uh, you know, in 10 years, I might tell you the live was 1%, you know. Um, so it's really hard for us to tell and it also varies based on the promotion that we do and the artist um, has a lot to do with that as well and whether or not people are, are tuning in. Um, so right now that's a little hard to tell, but I, I can say that the majority, you know, lives on, you know, on demand. Far more on demand. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you for joining me, Stephanie. I really appreciated it. Enjoyed our conversation. Uh, this is Troy Dreyer coming to you from the red carpet.